Hi, John Haver here from aclsurgeryrecovery.net and today I'm talking about seven essential tips to help improve ACL surgery recovery timeline. So my name is John Haver. Um, you may have seen a couple of my videos that I've been making. Um, so what happened is that I first tore my ACL um, playing rugby and then I re-tore it after I had surgery, eight months after the surgery. And so the problem was that I did not rehab properly the first time. And right now I'm uh, trying to make sure that doesn't happen again. And so I'm documenting everything that I do and doing a lot of research while I'm off work here to make sure that I uh, fix my knee up properly this time. So I just wanna clarify that I'm not a medical expert. And you can follow me on YouTube, uh, John M. Haver, Twitter, John Haver, and my website, aclsurgeryrecovery.net. So the typical timeline is six to nine months, and what to, and that's to returning to sport. So usually six to nine months after your ACL surgery, you can be returning to sport. And now what affects that? Uh, the damage that the initial injury caused can affect that. The strength that you have in your leg and knee going into the surgery, how intensely you rehab, the skill and procedure of the surgeon, and if there were any complications during the surgery. So the first tip is to use hamstring from your other leg or use a donor uh, tenon. So basically anything that I've seen online where someone had a really quick turnaround back to being able to uh, walk, they were had either taken the hamstring from the other leg as I have in this case, I was walking four days after the surgery, uh, or they were used a donor uh, tenon. Now, in the long run, this won't make a difference. The only difference that it'll make is that you, if you're able to walk within the first week, you're able to just move on to the next step in the recovery timeline and start working out more. So, bottom line, it improves uh, no difference in the long run as to how stable the knee will be, but in the short term, it's a, it can help you start recovering quicker. The tip number two is to manage pain regularly. Uh, if you don't let the pain creep up on you, you're able to do more of the exercises that you're supposed to be doing. Whereas if you're constantly trying to uh, fight off the pain, then it's tough to uh, focus on recovery because you're just focused on the pain. So set up a regular timer and start taking the medication at uh, sort of set intervals and not just when you feel like you might need it. I'm sure everyone knows this one. It's the reduced swelling in the knee. Uh, definitely the most important thing in terms of getting the range of motion back in your knee. So once the swelling's out, you'll find that your range of motion increases dramatically. So whether you use this gravity-fed style um, cryo cuff, or if you use a uh, pump style cryo cuff, uh, I've used both. I'm using the this style now, but I find that the the pump style is able to keep my knee uh, was able to keep my knee cooler, but it's a little bit more cumbersome. So. As with the swelling, you gotta focus on range of motion. Not quite like what this guy's doing. It's a little scary. But uh, you wanna be able to get your knee to 90 degrees within the first week, and you wanna make sure that you never lose the zero degree flexion or else your surgeon will not be happy with you. This one applies to me especially. Uh, don't be stupid. So, if you haven't been doing physio, don't go play soccer. I'm talking to myself here when I say this. Uh, and in general, don't push it. Um, you can push the controlled physio, but let's say you're trying to reach something that you can't grab. Don't try and get on a chair and grab it. Just don't be stupid. Um, that's really the most important thing within the first couple of weeks is just use common sense. And again, I'm, I'm talking to myself here. So tip number six is to set yourself up for success. 
So if you can have everything nicely laid out on a couch or whatever your home base is going to be where you're staying for the next uh, few days while you start recovering, that's really helpful. So having your books, your medication, your alarm clock, your TV remote, everything that you need to keep you occupied and also if you have all your uh, required physio stuff, so pillows, balls, you wouldn't need any balls the first week, but towels, pillows, etc. All right handy so that as soon as you are capable of starting some of the exercises you can. And finally the main recommendation is that to set up and follow an ACL surgery timeline. So this is um, a guide as to what you need to be doing each week. You can set it up yourself or you can use one that I created for myself. It includes goals, exercises, and the schedule that I'm looking to follow. And so the goal here is to make sure that I don't lose track of what my objective is, and that is to get my knee back into uh, good working order. And it will, the plan is that it will help me, um, it's helped me already in the first week maintain exactly what I'm doing every day, but also more so down the road when I'm starting to lose motivation that I'll know exactly what I need to be doing. So this is the same principle as any uh, weight loss program or any, any activity that requires any kind of physical discomfort is usually met with some procrastination. And so this timeline, the objective of it is to try and alleviate that and keep us all on track. So you're welcome to go have a look, steal mine. It is at aclsurgeryrecovery.net slash ACL surgery recovery timeline. Yeah, it's one of the pages at the top so you can see it there. Thank you.